In this video I'm going to demonstrate the Test Exchange Server Health PowerShell script and how you can use it within uh, your Exchange organization to uh, both test your servers in a real-time basis and also to uh, do scheduled health checks and automated reporting of your Exchange Server uh, health. When you download the script, you'll see that there are two files um, within that zip file. So you just extract that zip file into a folder where you plan to run that script. It does have a few dependencies. Uh, basically, it will call the Exchange 2010 uh, snap-in to perform some of the tests. So uh, you will need to put the script on a server that does have the Exchange 2010 management tools installed. Now the other file that comes uh, with the script is this ignorelist.txt and it's just an empty text file and that file is used, uh, you can use that you know, as an option uh, to basically specify any servers in your organization that should be excluded from the health checks. So uh, you may have some test or development servers or uh, servers behind firewalls that the script is unable to properly test and you want to exclude those from your checks um, so that uh, you don't get any false positive uh, results in your reports all the time. So you can just simply put those server names within that ignorelist.txt file. Alright, so let's take a look at running the script itself. Now it's uh, a fairly simple script. It has just a few parameters available to it. So uh, there are a couple of different ways you can run it. You can use the script to test uh, an exchange server directly in a real-time basis. So uh, in that case, we would run test exchange server health and then specify a server such as, uh, I'll use one of my lab servers. Okay, and that'll just roll past um, outputting some stuff into the, the shell window for you color-coded so that uh, the errors will catch your eye. Those are the things in red. Anything that's uh, considered a pass or, or is uh, considered okay will come up in green. And we can see here that uh, in my test server um, it was able to be resolved in DNS. Uh, the server is up according to sort of a ping. Uptime is good. Um, this will warn you if the uptime is uh, less than 24 hours indicating maybe that a server reboot has happened recently that you may be unaware of. Just some general server information that gets output there. And then goes on to some of the um, more detailed health checks such as checking the uh, critical services for each of the server roles. The transport queue if uh, if the server has um, the transport hub transport role installed. Checks that any public folder databases that are present uh, on the server are mounted. And then the same for the mailbox databases. So in this case it's found that uh, it's it's failed that test. The Marbox database is mounted as failed, and it goes on to tell us exactly which database uh, is found uh, is dismounted at this time. Then it goes on with uh, Mappy connectivity test. Uh, again, it reports the uh, database that has failed, and finally just a, a simple mail flow test. And it will choose a uh, a random server within the organization to perform um, the mail flow test with so it's not uh, completely thorough in that it doesn't check mail flow between all servers uh, in some cases it will just check mail flow uh, between itself but like most of the things uh, that this script reports it's only going to be indicative of a problem it's not a definitive result and one of the other things you'll notice is that it only gives you a sort of pass fail result it doesn't go into any sort of in-depth troubleshooting it's not going to diagnose the problem for you. So while it may tell you that a database is offline, it's not necessarily going to tell you why. Uh, that's something you would then need to look into yourself. Uh, and similarly, it doesn't do any sort of root cause uh, association between different faults. So obviously, if a database is offline, then the MAPI test to that database is also going to fail. But the script doesn't exactly tell you that that is why one test has failed because of an underlying root cause. We also have the option, uh, if we run it without any parameters, that it will just go through and it will check every server in the organization. So you can just fire off the script and sit there and watch that output roll past in front of you. 
and uh, just do a, sort of a quick health check of your organization. And that will take a varying amount of time depending on the size of your org. It's, uh, in very large organizations, that may run for an hour. Uh, if you've got um, sort of a more uh, average size organization, maybe only a few minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and test my um, entire organization here in my test lab. And I'm also going to demonstrate a couple of the other parameters that the script has. So the first one I will use is the uh, report mode parameter, which I will set to true. And that just sets, uh, uh, as the name suggests, it just sets um, the script report mode on. So it will actually output a HTML report uh, of these results um, once it completes uh, the execution of the script. So at the very end, it will just output all of the results to HTML. That file will just be placed in the same location as the script is running. Uh, you can um, use a, an optional parameter of report file and specify a more specific location and file name. So for example, you may wish that um, the script writes the HTML file into uh, a folder on one of your web servers so that you can load that up in your web browser from your own computer and have a look at it. I'm just going to leave that one out for now. The other parameter I'm going to demo is the uh, send email parameter and I'll also set that one to true. Now just by setting send email to true that is going to trigger the script to uh, send the HTML report to uh, my email address and that email address has actually been specified within the script itself. And you can edit the script uh, in your own system and you'll find that all those email settings are just stored together here towards the start of the script. Okay, so you can choose your own SMTP server, um, the address that the report should be sent uh, to and from, and you can modify that message subject as well. One thing I will point out is that if your SMTP server specified here is um, unavailable, the report obviously won't send, um, and so the report may actually, or the script may actually detect that your transport server was down, but uh, because it can't send you that email, uh, that you won't get that automatic notification. But if you're also writing the report to a HTML file, uh, storing that on a web server, then you can check that first thing in the morning as well and uh, see those results regardless of whether that email reached you. Okay, so let's go ahead and run the script with the report mode uh, set to true and also send email set to true. Okay, that script is finished running and we can see uh, that new mail notification popped up here in my inbox. So here's the HTML report that's been emailed to me. The first section here is just a health check summary. So it's going to tell us about any errors or warnings that were detected per server. So it just summarizes the information that was collected by the script uh, and gives us a little bit of an idea of what sort of uh, critical errors or just uh, plain warnings are occurring on these servers. And you can use this information to sort of piece together what might be going on. So uh, obviously within our database availability group, if one server is saying that a mailbox database is not mounted, then all of the other members of that DAG that also uh, host replicas of that database will say the same thing. Uh, similarly, they will fail their MAPI test. And we can see here on uh, my server, HOEX 2010MB2, required services not running, and also a warning that it could not check the queue. So there's a clue there that there's possibly a problem with the transport service. As we scroll down here, we get a little bit more detail. Again, this is color coded for um, easy viewing. And we can see that in the case of MB2, it was in fact the hub transport services that failed. Okay, so I've gone ahead and uh, resolved the issues that were picked up the first time I was running the script there. So let's go ahead and just run it one more time in report mode and send email. <clears throat> and that 
that's a much better result, mostly green. Uh, just one issue with not being able to ping the edge transport service. I have the option basically to look at opening up firewall ports or just uh, excluding that server entirely. And in the report here we can see that's the only warning that the edge transport server was unreachable. Everything else looks pretty good.